Tonight, I would like to talk to you about prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is surrendering your ability to fulfill God's promises in your own strength. If I look at what um, the prophet Elijah did, is he basically eliminated any possibility that the sacrifice which he offered to God, could catch fire by anything in the natural. So Elijah showed us an example of perfect prayer. And that is when you can surrender your own ability to fulfill God's promises in your life. And for God's glory to show up in your life. And that is through pure and simple surrender. So when we see the prophets of Baal coming up against Elijah, when he basically posed a challenge to the 400 prophets of Baal, which was uh, put there by Jezebel, he basically put a challenge to them that if their God is able to put fire to the sacrifice that they make, then the Israelites must basically worship Baal. And if God is the one that is able to consume the sacrifice, then the Israelites must choose God. And he said, for how long will they be between two opinions? So basically, after the prophets of Baal started cutting themselves and chanting and going wild, and nothing happening. Elijah not only, he basically prayed at the end of his um, making this sacrifice, but he surrendered to God all of his strength and all any hope that he could possibly fulfill this miracle in his own strength. And by doing so, he basically drenched that offering with water many, many times. This is a very vivid of example of how God wants us to view prayer. And when he finished praying, God literally sent fire down from heaven and consumed not only the sacrifice, but basically consumed the rocks and everything around it. That is when God's glory shows up. And God's desire is that His glory will show up in our lives in the same way. We look at, for example, what happened in Joseph's life. Joseph basically went through a very turbulent time in his life when his brother sold him to slavery. And not only that, when he was promoted in the house of Potiphar, he was accused of trying to rape Potiphar's wife. And then he was thrown into prison. And shortly thereafter, Joseph was promoted to the keeping of the entire prison. Now just think of that for a moment, people. Joseph had the keys of the prison itself. So Joseph could have escaped that prison any time that he wanted to. He literally was in charge of all of the prisoners. He could have done anything he wanted to at any time, and he could have escaped confinement. But what did Joseph do? He submitted to God in the process. He knew that it, it was God that was taking him through a process. And he surrendered anything and any ability he had in himself to make the promise of God 
come to fruition in his own strength. Joseph could have escaped and he could have gone on with his life. But he knew that if he did anything in his own strength, he would have short-circuited what God wanted to do in his life. And the promises of God would never come to pass. In fact, he would when you when the flesh interferes with with the process of God and the things that God wants to do in your life you put the flesh in motion and you sow to the flesh you literally create something that could destroy the entire plan of God for your life just like um Abraham who had his son Ishmael for Isaac to be born after um, Abraham messed up, he literally had to ban or kick out his son Ishmael out of the house because he knew that Ishmael would interfere with his son Isaac and he would become a thorn in the flesh. In fact, even now till today, the Muslims are a thorn in in the flesh to the Jews and to the Christians. Um, it's not that we hate them, it's not that we um, despise them, but it is it's just a fact. In fact, the Bible says so. But look at when the Ark of the Covenant left the temple, and when they brought it, when David had it brought, wanted to bring it back, the Ark of the Covenant was basically... Uh, shaking and it was about to fall and one one of the guys i think it was one of the guards or it was somebody tried to catch and save the ark of the covenant but what did god do he killed that man literally with a strike of lightning that man fell down dead why would god do such a thing because he would not share his glory with any man That is the deal. God would not share his glory with any man lest he could boast that he saved the Ark of the Covenant. There are some times that God would allow things to deteriorate in the natural realm and then we would just have to surrender and trust him in the process. And we cannot allow We cannot allow ourselves to interfere or try to manipulate the situation to make it happen through our own, I would say, even our cunningness or our wisdom or anything that we've acquired in life to try and prop up the the thing to make it look better. Like God could have called you to be a preacher or, or a pastor or a prophet or something. But do not try to go out and start a ministry or to go on TV or to go on YouTube or whatever until God has actually released you to, to do so. He might take you through some training and in some, some preparation in your life. And sometimes it might be a very long and a very rocky road. But once God has prepared you, you will be perfectly equipped and prepared to do what God has called you to do. But if you are going to go out into the world and prematurely give birth to to a ministry or something like that, Satan is going to attack you because that ministry would have been born of the flesh. And whatever is born of the flesh can be destroyed. So friends, I don't want to talk too long because... um, I know you guys got things to do, but I pray that God will show you the way. I pray that God would lead you and guide you and cause you to draw strength from Him. It sometimes costs a lot of time and effort to wait on God, and it's frustrating, but it's worth it. It is truly worth it because God will vindicate you if you have been wronged God will turn your situation around. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas and a happy new year, my friend. Until next time.